Today we've got the old Commodore 128 on the bench. It's time to fix that failing F key. So let's get to it. Now the F key, you can see here it wobbles. And the 6 key, you can see also it wobbles. The F key does not work, so when you press it, nothing happens. Whereas the 6 key actually does work, although it's wobbly. So first thing I'm going to do is take those out. Yep. Using the chip puller rather than the... is proving a problem with this key because the key puller has broken yet again. They really are cheap nasty things. Yeah. There we go. Now it doesn't look like there's anything obviously wrong with the key cap and the springs are intact. Let's find so I think I'm gonna to have to take the keyboard off and have a look underneath. We still need to take the back plate off. We haven't had this back plate off. It's going to be interesting to see what we find underneath. We're going to have to desolder these wires. I'd like to thank the sponsor for this episode, PCB Way. PCB Way make printed circuit boards and they have prices starting from just $5. Go to their website for an instant quote for your PCB design. You have a choice of board colours, number of layers on your boards, number of boards that you get built from five up to a full production run. They have other services too. They can source your components and assemble the boards for you. And their list of services goes on from CNC machining to 3D printing to sheet metal fabrication to injection moulding. So whatever your PCB needs are, whether it's for production or for prototyping or for shared projects like these, check out PCBWay.com. Their link is in the description below. And I want to thank them for sponsoring this video. So now back to the plot. Okay, now let's try and see which key this is the F key. So yes, that looks like it's broken. There's a channel you can see goes into this little thing there. It appears to be missing. And that's the 6 key and it looks like the same issue. There we go. As I pulled it out, it literally disintegrated. So I'm going to have to find a new key. And this, yeah, this, this is also very much broken. I might be able to resurrect it with some super glue, but I'm not holding out my breath. Poo. Okay, I'm going to see what I can do, but I'm not holding my breath. So I tried gluing these together and the results were partially okay, but there are so many little tiny fragments that it's not completely going back together and I'm 
Not entirely sure how well the glue would hold in any case. Um, it took quite a few minutes for the for the glue to set as it was. So I sat down to think and I started looking online and eventually I went on to Thingiverse and I saw this. Now this is a plunger and although it says it's for an A500 it's a Mitsumi keyboard and this is the same as what is in the 128 or at least it's the same keyboard mechanism and so I downloaded the STL file and I set to printing a few of them out and this is what we got you can see that so the little rubber bit comes off the end of this Like that. Oops. And this goes into there we go. And then the plunger just goes, hopefully, into the hole. Goes into the hole on its own. Should also go into the hole. There we are. I've got a feeling. Yeah, that's that's in need of a little bit of work. Talk among yourselves. So I've printed out a bunch of these little posts, standoffs, plungers, whatever you want to call them. And I've fitted onto two of these, I fitted the little black rubber um, graphite covered contact. Now I did have to file these uh, little slots down a little bit just to get them to fit in. And they're still a little bit stiff so I'm hoping that the springs are going to provide enough spring to pull the key back up after you've pressed it. So these go in the holes like that and like that. There we go and then the keyboard PCB can go back on. Now one thing that came out while I was working was this little tiny spring. If you can see it, very very tiny spring. And this came from the keyboard just above the here we go, just above the plus key. There we go, that's in both cameras. So just above the plus key there. And that equates on the PCB to this little pad here, which I guess is a contact between the uh, metal chassis and the ground plane of the PCB. So with that back in we can put the PCB back on and 
I'm just going to put a few of the screws in for now because I want to test the keyboard to see if those keys work. And this is really just to hold it down. Okay, and I'm not going to worry about soldering those back on for the moment. That seems to work. You silly twit, you forgot to put the spring on. The six is a little bit high and the F is a little bit high. So I guess those plungers are actually a little bit taller, but let us plug the C128 in and see what it does. Okay, it's connected up. Let's now switch it on. Caps lock was down. Okay, these do stand a little bit higher than um, the surrounding keys, but they are actually working. So that's good. I think I'm going to proclaim that a success. I could of course go and replace all the other keys on the keyboard, which might not be a bad idea um, in the long term, because no doubt more of these um, key mechanisms is going to fail. I can live with those being a little bit higher for the time being. Okay, so it's all back together and the keyboard now works. I've had a look at what I think is causing these um, keys to be a bit higher. And I think it's basically that the hole that the peg sits into in here just needs to be widened up a little bit deeper and that should sort it out and that should let them sit a little bit lower. So I'll do that with a Dremel or something sometime in the future. And uh, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe and please feel free to comment in the section below. And meanwhile, there are some videos in that corner or that corner somewhere that you will certainly like to watch. So see you next time. See ya.